Stephen Curry doesn't get quote-unquote superstar calls, but despite not getting to the line once on Thursday night, he annihilated Miami with 33 points on 75% true shooting and effective field goal percentage. Further proving he deserves to be called the best player on the planet, Steph's clearly upset with the high volume of basketball audience members giving that label to Giannis. While an MVP campaign takes place for the chef, second option formerly known as Minnesota Timberwolves draft bust Andrew Wiggins is dropping 18 and 10 double doubles in his sleep. The Dubs core of champions are looking far from satisfied as Steph, Clay, Wiggs, Dre, and Poole combine for 91 points against Miami to put the blowout L to Phoenix in their rear view. However, the Warriors have allowed 120 plus points in three games already, something that didn't take place until game number 52 in their championship season. So how's Coach Kerr handling this, and is the lack of defense a concern? After breaking down the positives offensively, I'll answer that. But before continuing, just 8.6% of you watching this video are subscribed, so please subscribe if you haven't already. Also drop a thumbs up, it makes a huge difference and takes just a few seconds. For NBA edits, follow at Hoops on Instagram. Thanks so much for your support, now into the content. Facing off against Stephen Curry and Draymond Green entails fending off the best offensive talent and the best defensive talent on the same night, especially when the two are motivated which they absolutely are right now despite just winning a championship. Draymond Green's proving haters wrong so far with an underrated offensive season, but facing Steph specifically entails opponents have to defend the most lethal gravity drawer the sport has ever seen, a top five player of all time at the very least, the greatest shooter ever, the greatest point guard ever, and the best player in the game today, which shouldn't even be a discussion, considering that Giannis Adetokounmpo has already said himself that Curry's the best. The dominant force that Adetokounmpo is shouldn't be taken for granted in its own right, I've said that before, but as the Greek freak even alluded to himself, the best player in the league should be the player who most recently carried their team to a title. While Kevin Durant got in the way of people thinking of Steph as that for a number of years, fact of the matter is, Curry's been the best in the world for a number of seasons throughout his career. As Kevin Garnett recently said, we're now out of the LeBron era and are officially in the Stephen Curry era. We could be in the Steph era for a while, as Curry touched on extending his prime after the game against Miami, saying, I'm stubborn enough to think that I can do this for a lot more years, end quote. When he's pulling off moves like this one after coming off a Kevon Looney weak side pin down where he pump fakes, jab steps right, has his left, goes between the legs right, behind the back to his left, and momentum cross back to his right to get Tyler Hero leaning, then getting utterly hyped after the play, you know this man has something to prove. He has to hear about how Giannis is the best player in the world, given that Kumpo is labeled as that by about every mainstream media outlet. We're talking about a player in Curry who reversed the fortunes of this Golden State franchise upon his arrival, having led the Warriors to their first championship in 40 years back in 2015. Right before KD hopped on, Steph fueled the Warriors to the best regular season record in NBA history and became the only unanimous MVP in NBA history. Curry's the guy who took the Dubs franchise value from 300 million to 7 billion. With all due respect to LeBron making eight straight finals appearances, Steph's had the greatest eight year run since Michael Jordan, having captured half of the available championships over that span. Seemingly amidst his third MVP season this year, Steph's on pace for 443 threes, which would break his own record of 402. In his zero free throw outing against Miami, where Steph dropped seven threes, 33 points, nine dimes, and seven boards, it was his 107th game with seven plus threes, by far the most ever, as the next guy in James Harden has 42. Meanwhile, Klay Thompson has 35 7 plus 3 pointer games, which is fourth all time. If there's any player that's unpleasant on this Warriors roster right now, it's Klay after unrightfully getting ejected against Phoenix. The free throw disparity in that Suns game was extremely weird. Thompson getting kicked out was the icing on the cake to the ref's questionably officiated game. To be fair, before his first career ejection, Clay shot 0 of 4, including 0 for 3 from 3 point range, with Devin Booker as his primary defender. But many aren't taking into account that, with the game within a few possessions, it was how Thompson was defending Booker 
which was keeping the Dubs at bay. Clay held Devin to three points on one of three field goals made, 0 of 1 from three, and he forced him into a turnover. It's that defense which made the comments of Charles Barkley stating that Clay is not the same player as he was before so damn disheartening. Thompson said it quote, hurt his heart when he heard that take from Chuck, but the first half of the Splash Brothers in Steph put it better, saying quote, the comments are part of our success right here, we're always going to be in the spotlight, and people care about how you're playing, and care to comment positively or negatively, because they know that will move the needle, but it's interesting, because certain guys kind of forget what their careers look like on the back end, so you kind of cast and throw those stones, but Clay is still in here, helping us win a championship, end quote. Curry's clapback was spot on, as let's not compare the return of Clay to the later half of Chuck's career, because Charles Barkley's career ended after he ruptured a quadriceps tendon, Clay returned to a high level in the NBA to help a team win a championship after two back-to-back -back injuries that usually end players' careers. Luckily, after Clay's inspirational recovery twice, he doesn't need to be the all-time great shooting guard he once was, even though I think we should give him a bit more time to potentially get back to that level before making conclusions. He doesn't need to be that same player because of Andrew Wiggins, who's coming off a monster double-double of <laughs> Along with the life-infusing, absolutely crucial bucket and board getting that Wiggins provides, it's momentum-altering defensive stances which make the Dove's second option so damn important to this championship machine. Here he shuffles up on Hero's right side to simultaneously cut off Tyler's dominant driving hand and his option to pull up for three. This forces Hero to travel, but the refs don't see it and the play goes on, so he quickly gathers his dribble and momentum crosses to his left. By pressing up, Andrew funnels Hero into the help of Looney, yet he not only funnels Tyler into the help, but swiftly recovers out of his increased pressure to stay on Tyler's heels for a clean chase down, then he pokes it away from Bam to get the dubs control of the ball. Andrew does all the little things and dirty work, leaving most of the flashy sports center top 10 highlights to the rest of the Warriors, in large part to Jordan Poole. The numbers will come with time, but Jordan's Curry-esque ability to draw defensive attention is catching up to his Steph-esque handle and distance shooting. As Clay said on the All The Smoke podcast, the stars really lined up for the Warriors to have landed JP, because this man's developing into Stephen Curry 2.0. After Curry sliding into the Jermichael Green pick, then going between the legs and behind the back, this is definitely a travel, as when you slow it down, JP illegally changes hands without dribbling, fooling not only his championship teammate Damian Lee, who was forced to switch on to him, but fooling the refs as well. It's that type of smooth shiftiness that the officials likely got used to watching YouTube clips of, and therefore forgot to blow the whistle for a travel. Nice move nonetheless. There's still many facts about Poole I have in my back pocket, which again, I'm saving for a future video. Unfortunately, the Warriors are lacking defensively so far this season, giving up 31.3 points in transition, with only the Houston Rockets giving up more. They're allowing opponents to shoot 56.9% in those opportunities, ranking them 20th in the league in that category. They're also 20th in defensive rating. This comes down to young players like Moses Moody, Jonathan Kaminga, and James Wiseman filling the role of three veterans in Otto Porter Jr., Gary Payton II, and Nemanja Bjelica with more time in roles that provide significantly more pressure than they've been accustomed to, I'm sure Moody, Kaminga, and Wiseman will get better as the season goes on. Steve Kerr is more concerned than I am, and given he's the head coach, rightfully so, Kerr said this in regards to the lack of defense, quote, we're going to have to build our identity, and we're nowhere close to where we need to be right now. We're a very poor defensive team, and that doesn't win in this league, end quote. In your opinion, on a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being most worrisome, how concerning is the dub's lack of defense? Best answer down below in the comments gets next video shoutout. Two shoutouts for my last upload and this one next time. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.